Well, let's start out. We had a question about some navigation, and we can take a look at that to start today's class, and however far we get, that's how far we get. So, let me pull up the, the, the issues. look at these two and try to determine some issues before we go ahead. Yeah, the, re the reason I, I guess I focus so much on that is especially the one that had the, the dropout capability was for the people who do have so many just multitude of uh, menu items. What do you think about this? That is. So how about this? This is a thing right here. Yeah, and I know that and sometimes we refer to that as the toggle. Right. But sometimes you don't get the toggle on the small one. Right. Uh, when you get the toggle on the small one, but when you go to the full desktop one, then you have the traditional right. horizontal strung right. out. Okay, let's look at the first example and see what the issue with this is. This looks to me to be just a straight CSS issue. I guess I'm not following the question on this. Sometimes I, I, I try to 
go after multiple, like multiple ones just because. Uh, All right, let's take a look a at the second one. Okay, the second one looks like this, and then we have the drop down menus, and then we have a third drop down. All right. Now, when the screen gets very small, we go to this, and we run into that. Uh, yeah, if you squished it even even more so, uh, it's a very yeah. Now, if you want to go and want to bring down the sub menus, you'll see a very you physically can't get from right. the main menu to the sub menus when it does that. So, I guess for this, I'd like to either fix that option or go to the totally vertical layout that you saw in the previous example. Uh, like I said, because if you squish it a little bit more, I, I can't get, there's an awkward gap. Okay, the, the problem with like taking, like, you know, I, I'm all for trying out different approaches, but, but how do I want to say, trying out different approaches can also be an obstacle, because you get like half-baked, you have like three different things that are half-baked, oh. as opposed to one thing that's fully baked. Or at least, at least we hope it will. So let's look at this one and let's see what we can do about it. All right. Any any observations of something we could do? Um, I, I just know from my personal assessment, a lot of them are switching to uh, kind of your standard drop down uh, where you have to click on it to see everything listed vertically below it, as opposed to what's that doing? Okay, that's, that's great, and, and I don't mean to be difficult here, oh, no. all right, but that doesn't answer the question. Okay. <laughs> what is something to try here? What is something we could try or something we could think to do? Will it look exact, first I got to start with this, will it look exactly like that on an emulator, or is this the emulator that you're um, It should look like this on an emulator. Exactly, yeah. all right. Yeah, should look like this on a mobile device. So, well, you talked about then that really what is the people's purpose for going onto this website with a mobile device and what information would be on there, what information would they want to be looking at, and do they want to look at all of this information that he has there with all the drop downs? Could he possibly you know, okay. trim it back? That, okay, that, that, that's, that's one answer. Is this the right thing to do? And if the answer is no, then we take another approach. Let's assume that it is the right thing to do. What's under those? I'm sorry. What do you mean like, under them? Like one, two, three, four. What data is there? I think there's just link. I think there's just dummy links. I don't think there's anything. Yeah, right now it's yeah. It's, they're, they're meant to be links to other pages, but I don't think they're the the actual pages. Within are. okay, within the website or linking out to other websites. Within the website. Yeah, okay. ideally within the website. Right. Yeah, and one of the problems is this: that when we do this, then that pops above that and we can't get down to that. And then the other problem is when there's two levels of navigation, then depending on the screen size. Could he convert them like to two rows and have eight links instead of rows with uh, just one row? It's a possibility. Rows. What else could we do? You could have, it could go one, two, three, four. Okay. And then I don't know what the CSS would be, but when you hover over one, Show that, or depending on what they're linked to, you could have a link like a one and then information and then two and then information and then three and then information. Okay. Let's take a look at the code. Let's see what's going on here code wise. All right, here is the HTML for this guy. All right, there you put it. This is not really in play, right? That's just... Oh, that relates to the right. fact that the... Okay, so changes. let's look at... Our navigation. Our navigation is a set of nested, um, nested um, unordered lists. And let's look at the CSS for this, which is in start. Yeah, I have that as essentially. Don't the core. squiggly red lines indicate a syntax error? No. 
given the fact that this isn't a particular, that Notepad++ is not really language specific, uh, I wouldn't take its word for what a syntax error is. All right. Okay, we're doing nav ul ul, and we're doing some hovering to make some things appear on this. Trying to do the z index to get that on top of it all the time. One thing that I, I, I see would help you out is if this never got to a second line of main navigation links. Right? In other <coughs> words, if it never got smaller than that, you, you, one of the problems would go away. Is that a correct statement? Oh, partially. Well, when you hover over four, it still links out twice. That's why I said one of the problems would go away. Okay. <laughs> Not both <laughs> of the problems would go away. So one thing we could, how could we make it so it doesn't go down to a second? Min width. Yeah, put a, put a minimum width on it. So I could go in my nav and put, I don't know, I'm just going to make a number up. Min width. Four hundred pixels, just for laughs. Let's see what that gets us, if anything. Okay, maybe four hundred is the right number. Maybe three hundred. the problem of that. All right? Of things going down by putting a minimum width in there. And in fact, we could do that on the main container. Actually, I didn't notice it on that. You do have it there. That might be enough right there. Just up the minimum width from 250 to 300. And that gets rid of that problem. So this always is going to stay on the one line. All right? Yes? Anyone? Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes that's correct. David looks skeptical. I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure why. Uh, I guess I'm playing devil's advocate only because I know that you know that there are you know that there are phones that are less than 300 pixels wide that support CSS3. I, I guess I'm just focused on the quantity. The minute I think, oh, that works great for that finite example. So you had 250. I change it to 300. <coughs> right? Okay. Okay. So that's not really that big of a change. Right? Okay. So that got rid of one of the problems, right? Okay. <laughs> now, if you want to play the devil's advocate, let's get rid of that. change that, right? 
None we can do. The only other option would be to make it illegible, make it so small that you can't see it. Yeah. Yes? Well, if you had, like, menu four, what if that was just a direct link to another page that showed you the submenus? That would, that would be one option to do it. Have, them have, again, a mobile version of this so that that on a mobile site was not a drop-down, but a link that you clicked on and went to the sub area of four. That would be a possibility. You could make that look pretty classy. It sounds, it sounds like a, like it would be a very blank page, but if you format everything properly, it, it could look like you did it on purpose. <laughs> right. Could you, is she talking about me, are you talking about taking the numbers out of line and just running them in a vertical position? No, she's saying when you click, when you click on this, when you put your mouse over this and click on it, yeah. instead of having a submenu pop up, go to a different page that had those menu options listed. Oh, okay. Which you should probably do anyhow, because if you click on that, nothing really happens. Um, let's see. So you give nice little descriptions under the submenus of what they lead to. You develop the page. Makes sense. So the minimum width takes care of that. playing around with the Z index could be part of your problem. So let's go. Let's move that here. Am I going to make everybody's brain explode if I ask what a Z index is? Z index is the this way. This way, yeah. Where a positive number would be higher, would be away from the screen, and a negative number would be into the screen. So what's so, stacking? Well, stacking it are the ULs on top of each other. Okay. Um, now, let's go and do this. Okay. Got it. So, it's not that that's in the way per se. It's that this should be higher. Three. Okay. So, all right. That's that's my, my understanding of this is different. I thought that that UL was blocking it. It's not blocking it. The problem is that there's a gap here. Because this UL is starting underneath that other UL. What if I say Z index, by the way, is really confusing because it doesn't work exactly the way you think it might.
this is your culprit by putting in the clear both. Because what that does is that says that anything after that is going to appear underneath it. So that's what's going to make that second um, UL go underneath there. Yeah? Well, on the website, when you hover over the nav, mm -hmm. do you have to click on it to get your submenu, or are you hovering? I'm just hovering. So on a phone, how would you get that to work? Would you have to press it? it you, you'd hold, yeah, you'd press it. And you'd hold? I, I guess you'd press and go down. And, and drag down. I guess I just wonder with the mouse and the finger and the hover. Yeah, I, I, I would agree, especially when you get to that third layer. I'm thinking that third layer could very well be pretty awkward to do, implement on a file. I, I have tried other ones that have, I have tried other ones that have the same basic idea on a mobile device mm -hmm. and that after you press the main item, the sub ones will, re, will remain until you physically touch them on, on the terms of the phone. It's probably via JavaScript then. It's probably not over, not via CSS. It's okay to use Visual Studio to do this, isn't it? No. Yes. Visual Studio? Yeah. For what? C Sharp to write my, because I wrote my web page, my mobile web page on Visual Studio. Why wouldn't I? First of all, I have, no, I have no idea what that has to do with anything that we're talking about now. Because I would have done that, because I did my uh, menu look a lot differently than that. That's why. I, it's just. Is it okay to use Visual Studio to write this? I would need to see more details. I mean, you could use okay. Visual Studio as a plain old HTML editor, but if you're doing if you're doing things. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're doing things, you know, if you're, certain things, if you're doing them via server-side stuff, you know, we haven't talked at all about server-side coding for this class, other than to mention it. No, sir. I, I understand that since the other two classes I was, and then I'm using it in C Sharp, I just thought it would, it would assist me. Yeah, I, I guess I would have to see, I'd have to see exactly what. I mean, I'll be happy to go the other way. All right. At any rate, getting back to this, the clear both is your culprit. Because that's what's forcing that guy underneath it. Could you do something like, uh, um, Like do like dis like do an unordered list and do like a display none and then do like hover um, and then do like display block when you hover. That's exactly what he's doing. <laughs> oh, that is what he's doing. Yeah, that is what he's doing. He has he has the uh, UL um, oh, okay. as being display none okay. and then hover display block. All right. <laughs> I wasn't I was trying to figure out how I was. I guess one of the things that I had to experiment with was to take, obviously this menu works better for the desktop version. Right. So obviously at one point I was, I put it on essentially the other biggie CSS because that was intended for this, but the full desktop one. And I guess the problem I ran into then was when I came back to the, essentially the core CSS, the start one here. I was trying to figure out what pieces to uh, chip away at or alter for everything being listed in just one big vertical run, so to speak. That was the so that's why I ran into, ran into in terms of because obviously, like I said, I know people are going to be frustrated with things literally jumping off the right side there, or like I said. Uh, Switching literally from a horizontal menu to one that just lists the whole smash in one big vertical column. Uh, like I said, that's why I'm trying to make that leap. I just I don't think you can. Anything. I, I, I 
I've, I know I've, I, I've got ones I've downloaded from like Code Canyon and whatnot that show like main menu, sub, 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 main menu two, sub, 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 and it's just a laundry list in one big. Yeah, but are you sure they're not using like Java Trip or, or like jQuery or something like that to, to do that? Uh, and it's not just completely Java. Uh, uh, I mean, I can exercise. bring any examples. I almost guarantee that it is. That there's at least some sort of script in there. I mean, I might be wrong. But and I think you're building yourself an unsolvable problem because you don't have any context for these sub menus. You can organize data in a bunch of different ways if you know exactly what your data is, but you've written yourself an unsolvable problem because you have no context. I, I see what you're saying. I mean, it would be easy enough to come up with some navigation, but you're but you're right that that the, the I, I would also say this is unsolvable because you're trying to make a menu system that isn't good for for mobile work on a mobile. You know that that this kind of drop down where that drops down is good for a desktop, but I'm not sure that's the best choice under mobile. So what would what would be a good choice for mobile if we're gonna do this? Um ideally. Yeah, ideally. I, I think once it got to the the small screen width there, mm -hmm. you'd have your, your traditional drop down list with the option values um, that we have like done in other classes. As opposed to, like I said, having that kind of probably more ornate horizontal one trying to shape shift here. Um, I, I've seen that. It's very minimalistic and simple and clean. And so you're I, saying have a, a, a HTML drop down? Um, yeah, essentially the way we put in the, the, those the option value. Okay. We have like two, three, four, five, you know, ten things listed. I see a lot of sites that go that angle when it comes to the, the mobile version. Uh, you know, the same people who had the fancy schmancy horizontal menu are using that minimalistic approach when it comes to the, the, the mobile list. I mean, just the example you had before, that was that standard. Yeah, but, but what I showed you, there's scripting about that. That's not just HTML and CSS. What I showed you there is there was some JavaScript, a lot of JavaScript in there. Yeah, go ahead. I think because I have like virtually no experience in web design, I always come up with the simplest solution. Mm -hmm. But I looked at some interesting ones that went from like you know desktop to whatever, and like okay, let's just pretend that the website's about frogs because I see a frog, and that those four top menus are you know subsets of different kinds of frogs. What if you turn that into like four buttons? And then you had some text underneath talking about frogs, and then you could click on each one of those buttons, and then under that one you'd have, you know, under submenu one, which would be a button instead of a drop down. You clicked on the button for submenu one, and under that you had maybe six buttons for whatever had been under submenu. It, instead of instead of trying to move around a page, instead of going vertically and horizontally, you're actually going you're stacking the information. Deep instead of going across or up or down. I don't know if that makes any sense. All right. Let's and this this probably is more fascinating than, than what I intended to talk about today, anyhow. So. Oh no, I, mean, I didn't did mean to. <laughs> so so that. let's let's look at let's look at at something we can do. Oh no, I I, so I, I do want to give everyone a headache or a grief. The reason I bring this up is that ideally, I know that if I just went with four little square, square <coughs> little rectangles, I could call it a day and you know say sayonara to the homework. But I, I just see too many scenarios out there where people 